Hi there, this is Joe from Shop 2, and I'm joined by Dan. Hello. And we're going to be bringing your Xenoblade Chronicles X review for Wii U. You've been playing it, Dan, so you can tell us all about it. It's a game that's been out um, in Japan, I think, for quite some time, and it's finally made its way over here for the Wii U, uh, which I'm quite grateful for that it's had some experience with other players before me because, I mean, it is a pretty hard game. Um, so occasionally jumping on some uh, FAQ is just a bit of advice I found quite vital. Um, Story-wise, I mean, it is amazing. It's, 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 a, it's a huge role-playing game. Um, it kicks off with pretty much the end of Earth. Uh, there's two warring alien factions that appear out of nowhere above Earth's atmosphere. And a huge battle ensues, causing the destruction of Earth. Uh, a few ships manage to escape this and just disappear into the, into the vast blackness of space, I think, just hopefully to colonise and to survive. Uh, what we do is we're following the tail of one such ship. Um, it's, I think it's, oh, I can't remember, it might be a year or so after the initial uh, destruction of Earth. Uh, we find that the aliens have actually followed the Earthlings and again attack the surviving ship, which part of it crash lands on an alien planet called Mira. Now, what happens here is um, the survival pods are jettisoned onto the uh, uh, mirror's surface and the survivors then create the last hope of survival um, I think it's called New Los Angeles uh, where they will gather and slowly sort of learn about the the world around them and also try and save the remaining life pods whilst at the same time dealing with the inhabitants of the said planet and also uh, taking on quite a few uh, sort of dangerous beings that sort of flood the, the many many environments that you can wander around. Yeah, I noticed that when I I'd, like I said before to you that I had watched some footage on YouTube because I believe it's been out in Japan for a while by the sounds of things, and because uh, there's quite a lot of playthroughs in Japanese on YouTube, uh, so I don't really know much about. It, but I noticed the combat is it typical sort of Japanese RPG combat? Is it? It's a really nice blend. I'm not a huge fan of it myself, but it's enough that keeps coming back. And I think the game itself is so enjoyable and exciting and there's so much to learn and unlock about this game that it's enough to slip past, I think. Uh, how it works, you've got... I think the best way... It's, it's a, the game is itself is an open world. Um, from the main hub, you can just literally go outside and walk as far as I can see. It is a huge world. Uh, you traverse various environments. Now, aside from the aliens that are out to kill the, the humans, uh, there's also the natural uh, sort of animals that roam the plains and the jungles and the swamps. Many of these you can avoid, uh, but quite a few are also... Uh, quite nasty and they will actually go out to attack you basically just general survival of the fittest and that's where you can get involved in all sorts of fights and things what you have is a selection of arts once you've selected your or highlighted the enemy it's it's real time and the game kind of automatically attacks for you so every now and then say for example we, well there's two different weapons you've got melee and you've got ranged so, for example, with the melee, you run up close, and every now and then your character will swipe their knives or their swords. Uh, the team around you will also do the same, uh, leaving you to just use the special arts as and when they charge up over time. Now, with a lot of these games, it's a lot of you're throwing lots of health potions and buffs and things like that to make keep yourself going. Here, I find it weird because there are actually no health potions as such. What you have is instead is a um, that your members will call and it'll be a colour coded call of action so some will shout like a lay down some covering fire others will shout it's time to get up close and personal that sort of thing and each one's colour coded and the code is coincides with one of the arts and what you do is as when they call it you use that special uh, move at the same time and that gives you all a little boost of energy so it's a weird mixture of real time and classic RPG and it's it's hard to get your head around initially. And I said, I'm not a massive fan. And to me, that's one of the, the negatives, actually, of the, how good this game is. I'm, I'm, it's a, but it's enough for me to play past it because the environment and the 
the sort of investigation of the areas and the many, many missions that they come across uh, is so worth it. So what's the art style like in the game? Is it, is it sort of, would you say, current gen, Xbox One, PS4 sort of? It's... I mean, when you compare it to games of the Playstations and the Xboxes, it's not really comparing against them. It's a very classic RPG look to it. And how's playing with the gamepad? It's quite well split. You can either play all the action from the gamepad itself or the weather game, preferably. Main action on the TV screen and the gamepad. Because of the size of the map, uh, it's split into segments and that is shown on the gamepad itself. You can navigate for fast travel using that uh, with the stylus or your finger. Also, there's kind of a little mini micromanagement game as well. As and when you find mines, um, you're able to place items in them to get the most of the resources from them and combine that with other items in the area to boost that even more. So there's an awful lot going on. But so the main action itself is actually on the TV screen. Yeah, is it any multiplayer? Yeah, like I mentioned, there is... Um, it's an interesting way they've kind of incorporated online play here. And to be honest, it is confusing as, I tell you. It's... Uh, you could play solo. Uh, you can then join larger teams. You can trade items with each other. And... The, and can also create hubs where you can bring in other players that you know as friends and do kind of sort of mini missions as well in smaller dungeons. No, but there are some things from the footage I've seen it's kind of it's the sort of game where your fans are going to enjoy I think. It looks almost like the game they've been waiting for. <laughs> Would you if, say? I, t- I tell you, for me personally, if it didn't have the the action as it is and it was more just button bashing, it would be probably one of the best games in the Wii U. Um, and for a lot of people, I think it may well be that. Uh, it's, I say, the, the way it's presented, the scale of the game itself and the story, I mean, there are some absolute corking twists in it. Um, it will keep you hooked for weeks, let alone hours. I mean, it will go forever and ever and ever. It's so much to get involved in. So what the, uh, kind of Wii fans need then, really? Yeah, it is. I say, it's, I think because of the fact that you've got the arts and the way that the, the fighting is, it's going to really appeal to more RPG style players. Uh, more casual players, I think, are going to struggle with how that element of the game works. And I think that may alienate those players, which is a shame. Uh, so, I mean, definitely one for the RPG fans. Okay, cool. Well, don't forget that you can, uh, you can order Xenoblade Chronicles X from Shop 2. And please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Finally, Dance of Freedom. Tatsu thanks you.